Okay, hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Atia. Uh, if you haven't already, you should just like subscribe because I'm awesome and that would be great. But if you need any convincing, then I guess you can just watch the rest of this video. That's cool too. So about a month ago, in July, Alton Sterling and Philando Castile were shot and killed by police, both of them just about a day, day and a half apart. And of course my Facebook feed and my Twitter timeline were filled with all of these these like, fellow black people just expressing their discontent and their anger and their sense of helplessness and their sadness. And I expected that, I always expect it. It's just we live in a world where that happens and then that's the natural normal response, of course. Um, I guess a sense of grieving. But then I also saw a few non-black associates also posting things about the, what I consider murders of these two men. And it wasn't nearly enough, you know? It was a terrible week for a lot of black America and my timelines were just filled with black associates, black friends um, expressing their sadness and discontent. But what I noticed the most was the lack of support or solidarity for my non-black friends. I noticed that, you know, my non-black peers were unusually silent on this issue. Usually I have a few people in mind, you know, when something happens, they like jump on Twitter and these long rants and solidarity, da 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 da, da and you know, this was happening to people and it was affecting people that they call their friends and they were just very, very silent and that pissed me off. A lot of people like to claim that they have black friends. Um, it's a weird thing, it, like, having a black friend absolves you of all racism, I guess. It proves that you're not a racist, and for other people it's a genuine thing. Like, they consider this black person their genuine, die-hard friend, and that's great. And I guess my question for those non-black people who consider themselves to have black friends and were silent on this and are silent on other things pertaining to Black Lives Matter, why are you silent? Where are you? I thought, maybe I was confused, I was like, maybe I don't know the definition of a friend. And so I asked good old Siri, and I'm gonna ask her again. Define friend. Friend means a person who one knows and with whom one has a bond of mutual affection, typically exclusive of sexual or family relations. All right, and then the third definition that she just doesn't say is a person who is not an enemy or who is on the same side. Being a friend means having someone's back and it means being behind them no matter what. And you can't have my back if you're playing center field as a neutral party. You can't do that, you can't have it both ways. You can't be safe and content in the middle and not commenting on anything and then also call yourself my friend. It doesn't work like that. And to be honest with you, you're not an ally if you stay quiet on these things. You're not an ally. Being a friend to a black person does not automatically make you an ally to black people. It takes more than that. It takes showing support and it takes showing solidarity. It takes marching with us. It takes bringing up these conversations. Sitting in a corner or staying silent when these things are happening and affecting us, you're not an ally. You're a fake. You're a coward at that point. And do you really even have a black friend? You know, if you're not willing to go to bat for someone, are they really even your friend at that point? This is a movement that's gaining a lot of traction. I don't have time to have these friends who are cowards, you know? Things are happening too quickly, justice isn't being served, and I don't have time to coax you out of your corner and beg for you to fight for me. Like, no, if you're my friend, you're there. If you're my ride or die, you're there. I shouldn't have to ask you. This should just be automatic. And I get it, you know, posting something on Facebook isn't the end-all be-all of everything and, you know, I don't expect everyone to be on Facebook, but I'm the people that I'm addressing are the people that I always see on Facebook, the people who are always posting about, you know, which cat did this and which two celebs are, like, now dating and engaged and all this fun stuff and all these other causes. And, but let's be honest, you know, my generation, our generation, whoever I'm talking to, hi, our generation uses Facebook to show our support and solidarity for certain causes. You know, it's the next best thing of engaging in these social conversations when we can't be face to face, when we can't be on the ground protesting, marching and making change. And so when you're silent on Facebook, a platform that I know you in particular use for these things, you're fake. And I'm probably going to say that many more times throughout the video, I think that's the third time, but 
I see you, you know, I see you hiding in the corner. You're silent, but I can still see you. And I can see that you're not behind me. And I can see that you are playing neutral. And to be quite honest with you, I, I don't do neutral. I really don't. Either you're with me or you're against me. Those are the two extremes. That's the world we live in. I don't have the luxury or, you know, titter tottering on the line. I don't have that luxury. And I'm glad that you do. It's great for you. That's awesome. Congrats, must be a great life. Um, and so therefore, I don't have the luxury to have friends who are in the middle, lukewarm. Either you're hot or you're cold, you yes or you're no. Thank you, Carrie Perry, for that reference. <laughs> don't be fooled. Like, I notice your absence and I notice your lack of support. And I will always notice the absence and silence of those who say that they love black people, that they have black friends, especially those who love black culture. You know, you're like, oh, I love all these things and like, you know, a lot of America is based on black culture, but I'll use, you know, hairstyles and fashion and hip hop and R&B, all these different things that are very popular and very commodified. You love all these things and you say that you appreciate the culture and the people, yet we're dying in the streets by the hands of public servants and you're up in Jimmy Jazz trying to be black. Like I don't, I don't have time. I'm so sorry if I hurt your, no, yeah, no, not sorry that I hurt your feelings. And if I did hurt your feelings, you should probably think about why I hurt your feelings just now, because you're not doing anything. You're trying to hide, but I see you. And I also hear you too, because your silence is deafening. This isn't to all non-black people. Let me just say that. I know it's like pretty late in the game, but let me just say that. This is to those non-black people who call themselves an ally, who call themselves a friend of a black person, who may have maybe some family members who are black, and yet you're silent and you know who you are because you're probably getting really, really offended by this. Silence on matters of oppression is you perpetuating that oppression. It's you passively saying, hey, I may not be ethically okay with this, but I'm okay enough and I'm comfortable enough and it doesn't affect me enough that I'm not gonna say anything. And so your silence, whether you like it or not, is helping people get killed by police officers. And it's helping those police officers go free. And it's helping justice not be served. You are perpetuating a system that is killing people. And this goes on all forms of social justice. This isn't just Black Lives Matter. This is everything. This is women's rights. This is trans rights. This is LGBTQ rights. This is everything where people are being harmed and disadvantaged, killed, oppressed, and you are silent. You are aware that it's happening, and yet you are silent. You are a coward. You are a silent coward, and you are perpetuating. And I'm sorry, but that's the truth. In this case, your silence is consent for the violence against black bodies. And your silence tells me that my life isn't worth a measly Facebook post. You know, like I'm not even in the larger scheme of things, yeah, I want you to be out there protesting with me. But where this started is on Facebook. I'm not worth you saying words of solidarity on Facebook. I'm not worth that. It would take you two minutes. And that you're so afraid of, of what, backlash? Yeah, well, I'm afraid of being killed. Priorities, I guess. Are you really down with Black Lives Matter? I mean, you're silent, so I really don't know. And so I can think that you're a coward and you're just hiding in the corner, or I can think that you don't agree with it in the first place, and therefore you don't agree that my life is worth something and that cops shouldn't be killing my people at a disproportionate rate. If that's the case. You don't even have to tell me. You can just unfriend me on Facebook and never talk to me again. But you know who you are. And to the, my non-black friends who are actual allies, good on you and thank you. And you gotta take it one step further. We all have to take it one step further. And we have to call out those who are not doing anything. It's like Martin Luther King Jr. said, in the end, we will not remember the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. And I'm definitely going to remember this and I'm sure I have a lot of black associates who will also remember the silence of their non-black friends and their non-black allies who are silent when these things are happening. And you know, it takes more than just posting when it happens to constantly talking about it. Thank you so much 
for watching this video. I hope you come back. You should definitely subscribe so you know when I post new videos, I will be posting in the future. Also, I do have a blog, which is directly connected to my YouTube channel, www.casualanxiety.com. I post there every single Monday, things that are just rambling around in my head different ideas, different things like that. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and like my Facebook page. All that information is going to be in the info box below. See you next time.